You can go ahead, Karen. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's Sustainable Canadian Agriculture Partnership on Sustainable Ag Processing. Um, we will start with our land and treaty acknowledgement. We recognize that Manitoba is on Treaty 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 10 territories and the ancestral lands of the Anishinaabe, Anishininawik, Dakota Oate, Denisulin, Ininawik, and the Hethawik peoples. We acknowledge Manitoba is located on the homeland of the Red River Métis. We acknowledge Northern Manitoba includes lands that were and are the ancestral lands of the Inuit. This morning we'll be talking about the sustainable agri-processing and this is funding to support the sustainability of Manitoba's agri-processing sector by assisting with studies and the capital investment purchases that contribute energy saving greenhouse gas reduction, optimization of agri-inputs, reduction of water use and clarification of wastewater and the conversion of byproducts and waste products to alternative value added applications. Um, we have Jeff Fittick with us today and he's with Manitoba Agriculture and he will be going through an overview of the program. Great, Jeff? thank you Karen. Welcome everybody, glad to have you today. All right, so let's get going here. In terms of what we're gonna talk about today, uh, as Karen mentioned, we're gonna do an overview of the Sustainable Agri-Processing or SAP program. So we're gonna tell you about the intent of the program, who's eligible, the funding streams that exist within it, what's ineligible, what is eligible, uh, the assessment criteria, and so far as uh, you know, submitting an application, the things we're looking for, uh, how to apply, so navigating the Sustainable CAP website in terms of getting to the applications. Um, you're welcome to ask questions, but what we're gonna do is um, uh, we, we'll speak to all the questions once we've presented all the material. And um, I find it's always a, a bad habit of interrupting people. So <laughs> I always try and write down my questions as I think of them. So feel free to type your questions into the uh, input thing on the, on the um, session here. And then we'll, we'll answer all your questions at the end. And also we will be, this is being recorded as was noted, and we'll be sending a link to the recording to you. And we'll also send the slide deck to you as well. So everything that you're gonna see today will be made available to you on a PDF file. So away we go. Um, I really hate doing this, but I'm basically gonna kind of read the, the guide to you and you know paraphrase and, and you know kind of give, give some other thoughts about what is in the guide, but I think it's, it's pretty pretty well written in terms of trying to be clear and um, give you as much guidance as possible to help inform whether the project you're thinking of is, is going to be a fit for this program. So in terms of going through here, um, as, as Karen mentioned, I think she mentioned some of this, this initial stuff about what this program supports. It really is all about sustainability and things that are going to contribute to energy savings, greenhouse gas reduction, um, optimization of agri inputs. And the way we look at that is just insofar as saying, well, if we can preserve the valuable agri inputs that are being created um, or stored or what have you, then there's going to be more available for Manitoba's agri processing sector. And that should also help in terms of conserving the prices of those agri inputs. So on the other hand, if, if a lot of agri inputs are being wasted, uh, we're not getting the maximum yield out of things, then that's gonna create a shortage and basic supply and demand, it's gonna drive up the pricing for those. So, um, and, and, and if you're, you're driving up the price, but a limited quantity, you know, from a producer perspective, you're not really getting ahead. So you wanna conserve those inputs. We're looking at reduction of water use, clarification of wastewater. That is a big, water is a huge topic for Manitoba. Um, we're looking at the conversion of byproducts and waste products to alternative, alternative value added applications. There's, there's a lot of great research that's been done in terms of using waste products for other things. And I think the timing of this program is, is excellent insofar as providing you with the opportunities to actually uh, implement uh, said research. In terms of the focus of this program, we're looking at maximizing the capture and use of agri-inputs, 
reducing the use of water associated with processing, including sanitation, improving the cleanliness of water expelled from processing operations. The motive behind that is that we want to put less stress on the municipal water uh, purification system because then ultimately it saves taxpayers uh, money, you know, business owners and uh, personal taxpayers money insofar as not having to maintain or replace municipal water clean, cleaning infrastructure uh, as, as often. Um, we're looking at identifying and implementing opportunities that user convert waste materials for alternative uses and of course innovative technologies which are typically involved with those kind of things. In terms of what's new in this program is um, we did have elements of this program offered under the CAP, Canadian Agricultural Partnership, the previous framework. It was in the capital assets and equipment uh, activity area. And now it's a separate program uh, with a separate focus. Also too is in the CAP one, uh, capital assets, there, there was um, a bit of a focus on the financial outcomes. This program here is uh, really not concerned with the financial outcomes. It's really concerned about the environmental outcomes. In terms of program eligibility, we have primary producers, agri-food processors, agri-product processors, licensed commercial kitchens. Those can be private or um, community kitchens, indigenous government, businesses, communities and organizations, and food and ingredient wholesalers, and abattoirs. What's new on here is that we have added primary producers and we've also added indigenous government, businesses, communities, and organizations. In terms of these applicants, we would want them to be directly involved in or affiliated with activities that contributes to the transformation of agri products into ingredients or end products. So, and, and, and even thinking from the perspective of a producer, a producer who is raising livestock, who is raising crops that are going to be uh, inputs to Manitoba's agro-processing sector, that would be, um, you know, that would be their connection insofar as, as uh, being an eligible applicant. So we're looking for um, value-added activities that result in products that are ready for direct sale to consumers or ingredients for additional value-added processing. Um, for cleaning, packaging, agri-products into market-ready materials or goods, and uh, agri-processing-related activities requiring the use and or disposition of water or agri-waste materials, where opportunity may exist to investigate alternative environmental outcomes stemming from these. So it, it's a really broad definition in terms of um, who the applicants can be. So, it, and that's intentional to try and make it as, as wide as possible because we know there's going to be projects that we haven't thought about that you may bring to us that could very well be an eligible product project and um, you know, from a, an eligible applicant. Continuing on with applicants, uh, they should be directly involved in or affiliated with activities related to moving agri inputs along the agro processing value chain. Kind of goes to, to what I mentioned earlier in terms of um, just being connected with that whole value chain. Um, must have a permit to operate a food handling establishment uh, before submission of a claim, that's for agri-processors. It can be from inside or outside Manitoba, as long as the activities related to the application occur in Manitoba or have a positive outcome for Manitoba. Um, that part about or, I'm, I'm not sure if activities outside Manitoba would have a direct out outcome, but uh, I guess we'll see. Uh, they must have a Manitoba premises identification number if it's an abattoir, and they must ensure that they meet all eligibility requirements. That's pretty standard stuff there. Okay, cost share funding. So the minimum project size that will be accepted for any of the SAP uh, funding streams is $5,000. And eligible expenses include things that are directly related to a project. So that could be capital assets and equipment, equipment rental, materials and supplies, the professional fees, subcontracted services, overhead, and provincial sales tax. What's new in here is that we did, um, for this program, when it was in the CAP, we had a $10,000 minimum project size. So that's now been reduced in an effort to increase accessibility. In terms of ineligible expenses, I think most of these are, are common sense kind of things, but we can run through them here. 
So any expense, including a tax, which is eligible for a rebate, credit, or refund. So you can claim your GST, goods and services tax, on uh, you know as part of your budget and as part of a claim when you make it, um, because that one is is uh, refundable. But as we mentioned, the PST is not. So in-kind contributions such as staff labor, use of assets and equipment, materials, technical, in-house consulting, anything that you're contributing is not going to be eligible. Now there is a part part on the application form, and we'll be talking about that tomorrow, in regards to um, fixed costs that can, there's a percentage of fixed costs that can be included. Um, and it, it, it might cover some of these things that you're contributing, but we no longer call it in kind. Um, lagoon construction, if it's not associated with any sort of water treatment infrastructure being uh, added as part of your project would not be eligible. So, the, but if you're building a lagoon and there's water treatment like a DAF system attached to it, then that would be, that would be fine, that would be eligible. Uh, and the reason being for that is because a, a lagoon on its own is, it, it isn't necessarily doing anything to treat the water, but if you have a DAF system attached to it, you're actually you know, adding some value in terms of the treatment and the speed of treatment of that water. Um, another thing that's not eligible is training that is not directly related to the acquisition of approved new equipment or technologies, expenses related to research and development. Uh, we have a whole separate programming area for research and development activities. Any expenses not required for the execution of the project, that seems logical. Normal operating expenses uh, associated with carrying out business operations, again, that seems logical, and extended warranties. Smart thing to have, but the program doesn't. Uh, cost share for that. Continuing on the ineligible list here, we have spare parts not used in the project, replacement of aged or damaged equipment. Um, and, and that may happen sometimes, uh, you know, insofar as you may have a system and you're upgrading, but I think in insofar as making your application, you wouldn't want to, you would want to frame it insofar as this is the newest, best kind of equipment. And yes, we had a system but the motivation isn't just replacing and plugging along at the same, in the same fashion as the old equipment. You want to do some sort of disruptive change um, or present it as, as such insofar as um, why you know, uh, this project should be funded. And, and you know, typically we're looking for something that's disruptive in terms of stuff that we can fund. Um, ineligible also is up Upgrades to existing facilities and buildings, including electrical and plumbing systems. Again, if it's just repairing a building or, or facility, um, doing basic business as usual upgrades, that's not eligible. Expenses associated with lobbying, uh, finan financing charges, loan interest payments, bank fees, again, not eligible. Any competition, oh, I'm sorry, any compensation to any government employee, uh, purchase of land, building, and facilities. So any sort of project under the sustainable capital uh, CAP program would not include land buildings and facilities. Any additions to newer existing buildings and facilities, um, again, not eligible. Normal, normal current or ongoing maintenance expenses, cost establishing commercial operation or new farmyards and multi-use items. So quite a bit of a list there. Um, so ATVs, trucks, clothing, footwear, pressure washers, cameras, computers, printers, all that sort of stuff. Um, and the reason is, is because it can't be directly and only tied to a specific pro project. So therefore, um, we wouldn't cover that. A couple more here in the ineligible category. Any project related activity that generates revenue during the implementation of the project, leasing or renting of capital equipment, only purchased capital equipment. You can finance it through the bank or through the equipment vendor but you need to be on record as the owner of that asset. Expenses incurred for other projects. Of course, if it's not directly with this project, it wouldn't be eligible. Um, anything purchased after April, or, I'm sorry, prior to April 1, 2023, and anything else deemed ineligible. All of this is a pretty thorough list, so hopefully there's nothing else. Um, there's a section called funding for government, and this essentially deals with something called stacking. And what that means is that you are allowed to use other government sources for a 
uh, a single project. And in the case of a, um, if you were a community center, let's say, and you had a licensed commercial kitchen, you, you if, if you could obtain it, you would be allowed to have 100% of the total project value covered uh, or cost shared by government sources. Not necessarily just this program, it could be other programs, it could be other federal or provincial programs. For a for-profit entity, you can go up to a maximum of 75% government contribution for approved eligible expenses. Okay, for funding streams for the uh, SAP program, we have four of them, and they are building envelope, lighting and ventilation upgrades, input use efficiency, water use efficiency, and waste use efficiency. What's new here is that under the old CAP program, we had projects under a million and projects over a million. So we've transitioned that to four different focused targeted streams. And um, of course, environmental initiatives now have their own funding program. It's not just off the side of the desk of the capital program. Now, in terms of the four funding streams, you may apply for all four of them concurrently or at the same time. Um, however, you're limited to one project at a time with the, within each funding stream. So, for example, if you had an input use efficiency project, you would need to complete that before you could apply for a subsequent input use efficiency project. However, you could have an input use efficiency project and let's say a water use efficiency project at the same time. Okay, getting into the programs uh, streams here. So building envelope, lighting and ventilation upgrades. So this is gonna be supporting the assessment and upgrades applicable to new and existing agri-food and agri-product production and office areas and equipment that create energy savings and our greenhouse gas reductions. So this funding stream supports assessments and upgrades that are unique to any programs offered by the provincial or federal or other federal agencies. So for instance, Man Manitoba Hydro, as an excellent program where they will come and do an assessment of your site and identify opportunities where you can make some, some energy savings. Um, those activities, we don't want to interfere with that. That is going to be, um, you know, in anything that, that this program supports uh, would not overlap with what Manitoba Hydro is doing. The cost share in this one is a 50% contribution from yourself and from the program to a maximum of $25,000 grant per project. So these are all uh, non-repayable monies. And you have a maximum of 12 months to complete your project. In terms of eligible expenses for this one, the, it includes upgrades applicable to new and existing production and office areas and equipment that creates energy savings and or GHG reductions exterior windows or interior windows separating temperature zones, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning or HVAC systems, walk-in coolers. Um, just on the HVAC system, it, it, it'd be like an upgrade or something that is going to, um, any of these things, it's going to be something that's going to present and provide uh, some sort of energy saving. It's got to be something that uh, you know, you can compare to the incumbent system and say, this is much better. And here's how much energy it's going to save. Uh, walk-in coolers and freezers, conversion of equipment motors to high efficiency or low voltage. Sometimes you may be able to get away with just converting motors um, versus the entire system. So that's, that's possible as well. Water heater conversions or upgrades. Uh, one opportunity there might be going from a, uh, let's say, central or a stored water heater kind of a system to a water on demand system so that you're not expending energy to, to, to have that water uh, sitting there and ready all the time, it just heats it as it's needed. Um, energy monitoring controls and equipment. Of course, it's important in order to know how much energy you're expending to understand how much you can save or, or opportunities for saving. So that's important. And hiring of professional services, again, not available through Manitoba Hydro to conduct energy audits, assessments, and consultations, and also to provide recommendations for improvements. A couple more here. Facility changes directly associated with equipment installation. So if something has to be modified, 
to facilitate equipment installation that can be considered, rented equipment that contributes to project completion, professional services related to project feasibility, scoping and design, engineering consultation, environmental consultation conducted to inform project feasibility and cost. And we've made this reimbursable even if an eligible project does or does not move forward. So we, we wanna encourage you to at least look at options, consider the options. And if, if there's an expense to that, the program is prepared to cost, uh, cost share that with you, even if you decide not to proceed. Uh, subcontract, com, excuse me, subcontracted services for the installation of eligible equipment is eligible. Um, and finally, fixed overhead for production operations. So this does not include management or admin costs, but it can be included as a portion of the eligible project cost. With the fixed overhead, this is the one expense line where you will not be required to specifically account for it. You're asked to, to, to mention what it includes on the application form. However, in terms of providing the uh, support when the claim is made, uh, you won't be required the same level of accounting diligence as with every, every other expense you may claim. Okay, the next program stream is input use efficiency. Uh, this one here aims to reduce wastage of agri-food and agri-product inputs that occur during harvest, during storage of crops and ingredients, and during processing by providing cost share funding towards the purchase of assets and systems that will mitigate wastage at these various points. So purchase of assets, that, you know, that could be you know, fixed capital assets, systems that will um, you know, help, help with uh, less wastage. So this one is also a cost share of 50-50, 50% -50, government contribution on a reimbursement basis. Um, to a maximum of a grant, non-repayable, of $50,000 per project. And this one here, you'll have 24 months for the project to be completed. For um, uh, of the use efficiency um, funding streams, um, I've divided up the cost because there's a couple of costs that are specific to each one. And then there's a, a bunch of them that are common between the three of them. So I'll give you the, uh, the ones that are specific first, then we'll, we'll hit the other ones afterwards. So in terms of eligible expenses for the input use efficiency uh, funding stream, it's on-farm metering systems for harvesting equipment that maximize crop yields during harvest. So that could be something where you have um, you know, let's say a, a device that measures your yield as you're harvesting and allows you to fine tune your, uh, your combine such that you're getting more in the bin and leaving less on the field. Um, and from what I've read, that's a pretty easy opportunity in terms of addressing that. So, and there are systems and equipment out there that, that can help you with that. So we, uh, we want to encourage that. Um, equipment technology and systems that manages and optimizes ingredient usage. So calibration systems, metering equipment, raw material delivery systems. So stuff that's going to increase the accuracy with which you're handling your raw inputs and, um, and you know, conserving those so that you're not having a bunch of wastage. Air circulation and humidity monitoring and control equipment to reduce volume and value of wasted ingredients in storage on farm, at agro-processing facilities, or in storage facilities. So, um, you know, that could be something like, you know, your grain storage, your uh, potato storage, let's say, and so far as maintaining the proper conditions that is gonna extend the longevity of that uh, product in storage so that you're gonna minimize your shrink or your wastage and have more product to, to, to be selling. Um, and finally, automated produce cleaning systems to reduce wastage and storage. That's kind of a specific one, um, but it really, it, it can be other things that you might think of or, or find that are going to help reduce wastage in some fashion. And really it's a matter of saying, well, here's, you know, here's the business opportunity. Here's the business case. In terms of right now we're wasting this much, this buying this piece of equipment is going to reduce the wastage to a certain level. And um, you know, really, here, here's the tonnage of, of product that we're going to stop wasting going forward. 
Okay, water use efficiency. This funding stream provides cost share funding towards the implementation of projects that will contribute to the reduction in the amount of water used by agro-processors in their production or sanitation processes. So to the treatment of wastewater prior to being disposed or returned to the municipal system or to, re to the recovery of nutrients from wastewater. This one also has a 50-50 cost share and provides a maximum non-refundable grant of up to $250,000 per project. In this one, you'll have also 24 months to complete the project. Specific eligible expenses for water use efficiency include equipment, technology, and systems, including upgrades to existing systems that contribute to the reduction in the amount of water used in association with processing or manufacturing food and beverage products and sanitation activities associated with food processing. Um, we have seen some projects in the past where um, there is equipment where um, it is possible to, to waste less water, to use less water in the course of making products. Uh, there's recovery systems um, where you can be extracting nutrients from wastewater. Uh, equipment technology and systems that facilitate recycling of water. So rather than just using it once and dumping it, maybe there's a, a return loop that can be created and water can be used multiple times in the course of your activities prior to expelling it. Um, company scale wastewater treatment equipment or systems such as dissolved air flotation or DAF systems. And as we mentioned before, lagoon construction or expansion uh, can be included when new or incremental treatment infrastructure is a project component. So long as they're tied together, um, a, a, a lagoon would be eligible. Okay. And our final stream is waste use efficiency. This one here supports the implementation of projects that contribute to the creation of new value, the diversion or new applications for agro-processing waste products, byproducts or co-products. I'll also add to, to that too, is that it might even be a matter um, of um, just making better use of uh, like in terms of sorting, I'm thinking of a, of a potato farmer I was talking to where he identified a business opportunity where if he could sort out the smaller potatoes from the, the, the main side, the, 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 the regular size ones that the purchaser wanted, um, he could actually sell them as a separate entity and get a, a better return on those small potatoes. Whereas if they were to be included, um, with the larger potatoes, the customer would just sort them out and, and basically throw them in the garbage. So if there's a way for you to Hi, Karen. Uh, can you hear me? I think we've got him back now. Uh, sorry, sorry, everyone. I think we just lost Jeff for a moment there. Yeah, we did. Uh, okay, so Jeff, you're back. Yeah, you're very back good. again. Thanks for your so, patience, for, everyone. We'll just be a second here and bring yeah. that back up. You betcha. I'm not muted and mm. hopefully my screen is back. I'll let you know as soon as we're back. Okay, it looks like we're back. <laughs> there we go. We just kind of flipped it. Yeah, my internet was kind of acting up this morning, so I was hoping it wouldn't do it during this, but here we are. Okay, well, I think we're right um, where we left off, so carry on. Beautiful. Thank you, Laurie. All right, so continue on with waste use efficiency. So this one also offers a 50-50 cost share um, to a maximum contribution of $250,000 per project. And again, that's a non-repayable -re um, grant. And as with all grants offered in this program, it's payable on a reimbursement basis. Once you complete your project, you can make a claim and you have 24 months to complete it. 
Eligible expenses for the waste use efficiency include equipment, technology, and systems that contributes to the creation of new value from waste products, byproducts, or co-products. Equipment, technology, and systems for sorting waste materials to facilitate diversion to other uses or to reduce amount being disposed. So that speaks to the potato example I mentioned. Um, and equipment that converts organic materials to energy. We're seeing um, a number of systems available that are um, anaerobic digesters or even incinerator kind of systems where you can take uh, even a high, pretty high moisture content organic material and run it through that system and be creating your own, generating your own energy. So those are kind of exciting. So I mentioned there was additional um, eligible costs. So these all apply to the input water and waste efficiency um, program streams. And they include, oh, supposed to stop your video. Yeah, sorry, Jeff. I'm just gonna stop your video just so we don't, I think it will help the uh, entire um, pr production here. Okay. Yep. Okay, hey, sure, no, no problem at all. I'll continue on then. Okay. All right, so we have facility changes directly associated with equipment installation. So um, that, is, that is something that's eligible. I think there was a note about um, facility changes just on their own not being eligible. So the difference with this is that if, if there's a necessary facility change that's directly associated with equipment installation, whether it's just to get it into the building or you know creating a, a pedestal or a platform for something, that would be eligible. Um, ancillary components, so it'd be extra expenses associated with eligible equipment, so including standalone software, transportation to get these assets to your, your plant, physical installation, professional installation, so that can include plumbing, electrical, gas connections, pedestals, platforms, catwalks, training directly related to operating equipment. And if you've applied to or read about our um, capital infrastructure, um, program, you'll probably recognize some of those things in there as being uh, common to that program. Uh, you know, basically, we want to make, help you get the asset to your location installed, up and running, and operational. So there's there's complete coverage for that. Uh, rented equipment that's necessary to contribute to project completion is eligible. Professional services related to on-site initial commissioning, calibration, or demonstration. So we've realized that there can be an expense associated with getting the asset up and running. Um, so that's included as eligible. Uh, professional services related to project feasibility, scoping and design, engineering consult consultation or environmental consultation conducted to inform project feasibility and cost. As with the, um, the uh, building envelope program, uh, this one is also reimbursable if an eligible project does or does not move forward. So again, we want to at least encourage you to consider some, some options. And it may, it may turn out that maybe the, the, the ROI on something uh, on a project is lacking, but at least you've investigated it, you, you've thought about it, and perhaps there'll be a future time when things might change and, and the circumstances will um, be such that you would want to go, through for, go forward with the project. Um, subcontracted services for the installation of eligible equipment and fixed overhead for production operations. And that's the same as the one we mentioned before in terms of what can be included there. Um, in terms of the application worksheet assessment, and we're going to talk about the application process and worksheets uh, tomorrow. We have another webinar uh, scheduled. Um, so they're going to be based on the following information. So there's project description project deliverables and outcomes, capital and financial capacity, that's of your, your company, your management capacity, and completion of environmental metrics tables. So like I said, the, the focus is gonna be on all the environmental outcomes. And we have um, tables where you can enter your information to help us understand uh, what your project is going to accomplish. Uh, in addition to um, what I just mentioned, the application worksheets will be assessed based on the project outcomes, including the reduction in the waste of agricultural inputs and corresponding increase in yields. So basically the business case in terms of what outcomes is the purchase of this asset or executing this project going to um, uh, result for your business. So reduction of water used and disposed, 
reduction of waste sent to landfills or disposed on farmland. Um, the volume of organic materials used as fuel and corresponding kilowatt hours of energy created. The volume of water cleaned. The weight of effluent removed from wastewater, so solid material that's removed from wastewater. And uh, finally, greenhouse gas reduction. Uh, I mentioned these, this for each of the items, but just a summary here, uh, the project duration. And essentially the project duration would be from the point when um, a funding agreement is um, signed. So you would have uh, up to 12 months for the building envelope because those could be executed pretty quickly. And then the other ones are a bit larger, so up to 24 months. In terms of how to apply, well, you can navigate yourself to manitoba.ca and go slash SCAP. Um, you can also go slash sustainable CAP. That works as well. That gets you to this, um, this starting page here. You can scroll down a little bit and you'll be presented with a bunch of priority areas. They go up to seven and the one that you want for this program is right on top, number one, climate change and environment. And you gotta be sure to click on the little plus sign here. I tried the rest of it and it's not hot, just a little plus sign. Um, just on the side here too, you, there's a number and an email where you, if you need more information about anything, you can call and talk to someone or you can email a question and it will be uh, responded to. Uh, we also have YouTube and Twitter, so you can check out those things and news releases too. So once you click on the little plus on the climate change and environment banner, it brings you to some options here. So there's some other programs in the environmental arena that are relevant um, for producers. So there's the route program, there's sustainable agriculture of Manitoba, also for producers. And then here's our program here, sustainable agro-processing. Again, you'll wanna click on the little plus sign and it brings you to this screen got some more information. So some of the highlights of stuff we just discussed, some of the eligible expenses, keep scrolling down. And now you've got a, um, a banner for each of the funding streams that we mentioned. And for, for each one that you wanna see, you would click on a little plus sign. So if we click on this one, and there'll be information presented and then you can kind of scroll to the bottom of the page and there's, um, you can click on the words on these ones. So terms and conditions is all the technical language and legalese about the program, pretty standard stuff. The program guide <clears throat> is um, pretty much the information that I just presented to you. And um, what's, what's neat is that it is specific to this program. You don't have to wait through a whole ton of other programs that aren't necessarily relevant to you. It's just the sustainable agro-processing program in this particular guide. And there's an applicant information form and an application worksheet. Um, and in terms of the application, that's something new is that it is two parts. So there's a really short applicant information form where you pro provide some of your basic information, kind of tell us about your, your, your company and what you're, what you're up to. And there's a separate application worksheet. So you would only need to, um, to uh, complete one applicant information form to, in order to apply for any or all four of the um, funding streams. And then there is an application worksheet for each separate funding stream. Okay. And, and our first intake is open right now and it'll be open until the end of the day. So the actual day, not, not the work day. So up until 11.59 on Tuesday, July 11. Um, there will be subsequent intakes, but uh, we haven't decided yet because we really need to see how, how the first one does and where that leaves us in terms of our funding budget. So, um, but we will we'll definitely be uh, having more intakes and this is a five-year program. So we're just getting started. Uh, if, if you're not ready to apply this time, you know, there will be further opportunities. And that is everything I have for you today. Like I said, we'll be talking about the application uh, process, giving you some guidance in terms of 
what each question is, is looking for from you and um, suggestions about what to say for each question. And um, yeah, just some, just some guidance on that. So if there should be any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer those right now. Jeff, we have a few questions. Cool. Uh, the first one, is adding a unit process to an existing wastewater treatment system eligible? Adding a unit process to existing wastewater. So essentially expanding an existing wastewater to, yeah, I, I think we, we should consider that, yes. I would think so. Great. Um, another question is, what is the upper funding? I think that they're meaning to say, what's the upper funding level? Oh, um, like for each um, funding stream? I yes. believe so. Okay. Well, basically you can, you, you can get up to $25,000 from the building envelope one. Here, I'm just going to, um, I'm just, am I still sharing? Um, Hopefully. No, I don't have your screen. Okay, I'm just gonna share my screen here. What I'm doing is I'm just going to the website and share. So I just popped over to our website here and I'm just gonna open up that one. I can do this from memory or we can find it on our, uh, uh, here we go. All right, so building envelope is 25, up to $25,000. And that is noted, where is it noted in here? Ah, here, cost share funding. So, so up to $25,000 is the, is the contribution for the building envelope. For the input use efficiency, that one was, here if I just find the section, cost share funding. Um, that one is up to $50,000 per project. And then I remember that water use efficiency and waste use efficiency were both 250000 up to $250,000 um, for those ones. So if you had a project for each one of those funding streams, you could get 25000 plus 50000 plus 250000 times two um, would be the maximum um, that you could get for if you applied to all four of those projects at the uh, funding streams at the same time. Also too, the funding is based on per project. So if you should have another project in the future, when we have future intakes, you're welcome to apply again with, with new projects and um, the same limits would apply for each project. And that would be for the life of the program in terms of your ability to apply for more projects. Okay, thank you. Um, another question, are there funding limits for a company with multiple site locations or identities and a variety of projects and types or is funding review granted on a per project basis with no limit to an organization? Um, we do state in the guide that multiple um, business units of one company would, um, would, would have a common limit. So if you had three business units, um, they would all be considered towards the, the single limit. Um, so just to be clear, if, if you had business unit A, B, and C, and A had a project um, you know, that maxed out at, you know, uh, let's say for the, the, the building envelope one where the maximum grant is 25,000, if company A had the project that had a grant of 15,000, then that would only leave a grant of 10,000 available for the other two business units. So yes, they are considered as one entity. And we do ask about ownership in uh, ownership uh, of, of a company um, on the, on the uh, application uh, information form. Okay, thank you. Um, is there help to calculate the GHG mm -hmm. equation? Yes, absolutely. Um, and, and you can, um, 
If you need any help with that, just pop an email to agriculture at gov.mb.ca. And that email is also on the website. And you know, just, just say you need some help with that. Also too is there's, um, it's no problem if, if you want to provide all the data um, and then leave the calculation to us because there's there are different models for for calculating GHG and um, yeah it, it might be easier just to provide all the data and also too if, if we if we find that we need something more that you haven't um, included in your application we can just uh, contact you and, and work and work with you to get that information um, are projects by company or by site? That is, if we have multiple facilities, can each be funded to a project per stream? Right. Um, kind of the same question as, as earlier, where yep. they would all count towards one uh, limit per funding stream. Okay. And there is mention of 100% for nonprofits, or are they all 50-50? Yes. Um, well, the contribution in terms of the cost share, so they, those were all 50-50, that is correct. And what I was referring to in terms of the 100% um, potential maximum contribution means that let's say there was another program out there that you could find where they were also um, providing grants for some of these similar activities. And if you were able to access that, and that's according, you have to follow the rules of the other government programs as well, in terms of what their limits are. Um, so that would be if, if you're um, applying to another program and you're applying to this program, that's what the 100% means. Um, similarly, for a for-profit entity, your limit of total government funding would be 75% of pro eligible project value. So as an example, um, Prairies Can has an interest-free loan program. So you could access that and you know, there's, there's a certain value to that contribution and uh, you know, that, that could be used to fund one of these projects, let's say. So you'd have a contribution from that program and you'd have a contribution from this program. And uh, the stack, you know, those those limits I, I noted are the stacking limits. So you would still get 50, 50 contribution from us, so long as it doesn't equal more than 75% of the total project value. Great, thanks. Um, there's a question here. I just wanted to say that we will be providing um, a copy of the presentation slides as well as a recorded video um, as soon as that is complete and ready to go. And we're hoping maybe end of day today or tomorrow. Um, I believe that's all the questions we have. Are there any more? Not seeing anything or hearing anything. So with that, Jeff, I'd like to thank you for today's presentation. I hope this has provided some insight into the program. Um, if you haven't registered already, there is a session tomorrow, as Jeff had indicated. It is from 10 to 11, and it is regarding the application process and how to complete an ap application. So with that, thank you very much for joining us today, and we will hope to see you again. Thank you. Thanks very much, everybody.